Sound Mind and Body is supported by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. A lot of times I find that the, the person knows exactly what's going on with them. You know, it's like a lot of times there's a lot of doubt. It's like, oh, well, a doctor would know more than I know about what's happening in my body. And truly, like, I really find that our intuition about ourselves, our, our, that sense of knowing is very often right on. But um, I'm always probing to really listen and hear what someone senses is going on because we, we have our answers in there. And we just sometimes need to have them invited out. Hello, and welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we interview inspiring people about the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. I'm your host, Sheila Melody, and before we begin with our guest today, I'd like to welcome all our new listeners and thank you so much for subscribing. Our woo-woo community grows, and I'm so excited to be sharing this journey with all of you. Also, we now have a YouTube channel, and you can find that by searching YouTube for Sheila Melody, Sound Mind, and use the ampersand sign body, sound, mind, and body, Sheila Melody, sound, mind, and body, or the link will be in the show notes here. All the podcast episodes are on there, and my beginning Chakra Enlightenment series is there as well, so go check it out and subscribe. I've got some more video courses coming up really soon. Okay, so on with the show. Today, we're talking to Dr. Suzanne Schiller, a holistic chiropractor who specializes in women's wellness and uses a method called Arvigo Techniques of Maya Abdominal Therapy, or ATMAT. ATMAT increases circulation of blood, lymph, nerve, hormone, and energy within your belly, whole body, and energy system. It also teaches you daily self-care tools so you can stay healthy and vital. As a lifelong investigator, Dr. Schiller has explored meditation practices since the age of five, spent decades honing her intuition by reading energy patterns in herself and others, and adventured deep into healing frontiers of movement, somatic arts, and ritual. She is a true holistic energy healer, and this technique is extremely powerful, I can say. Let's find out more. Welcome, Dr. Suzanne Schiller. Hi, Sheila. (laughs) So happy to have you here. Thanks for having me. In the new setup of the Inbound Podcasting Network, right? Oh, it's so good here. So, Suzanne, tell us about your childhood. You told me that you were meditating since the age of five. So that is really awesome. Tell us about that. Yeah, I wound up in a pretty cool family. So my parents were meditators. They did transcendental meditation. And um, so both my sister and I learned to meditate when we were five. Wow. And yeah, we we were exposed to a lot, a lot of personal growth things. Wow, yeah. (laughs) As a child. I mean, that was like pretty much like I was raised on Cheerios and personal growth seminars from the time (laughs) I was little. It was really... um, really, yeah, maybe, maybe it was unusual. And, and maybe that was just a sign of the times, you know, early 70s. Where did you grow up? I was, I was raised in Los Angeles. Really? Okay. So I guess the more open-minded people in this on the West Coast, maybe. Yeah. I mean, were other kids in your class? Did anybody ever say anything? Or were they like, what are they doing? (laughs) No, well, we didn't really meditate at school or anything. But my mom used to always tell this story about like, all the teachers at school would put like the like the hyperactive kids next to me and they would like just chill out, which I think is so funny because that's basically what I do now. It's like I just chill people out. I love that. <laughs> so you were bent for that. Uh, apparently I was. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. I love that story. So what is your story of getting into what you're doing now and discovering this at mat method? Okay. Well it was definitely a, like a a long and winding journey from like I first took a bodywork class when I was a teenager. 
I took an acupressure class and was just blown away and amazed and thought, oh my gosh, like I, there's really something to this body work thing. So I became a chiropractor early on and a massage therapist I went in my early 20s. And then um, after practicing for maybe like 15 years or so, mm-hmm. um, eventually I had a really, really cool doctor myself, a naturopath when I lived in Hawaii. And she she just clued me in that women don't have to suffer with pain, like pelvic pain or menstrual pain or things that we just think of like, oh, you're a woman, you just have to deal with it, you know, kind of right, stuff. Right, yeah. And she was really educational and just kind of opened my eyes. I mean, I was in the world of natural health, but she really opened my eyes to like, hey, you don't need to suffer. Wow. And um, that's that got me started on being really curious about the belly and the pelvis and like what what is there for us to do as women that that can help keep us healthy and happy and and you know and stop the suffering so i started pursuing things like learning our vigo um therapy and holistic pelvic care and just different uh unconventional ways of um treating the body so what what does the arvigo method entail yeah. Yeah. What is that about? So the Arvigo method, um, it's a pretty complete system, and it actually uses some herbs. I don't use a ton of the herbs myself in my practice, but there are herbs. There's hands-on therapy. There's self-care treatments, including um, a self-massage and things like castor oil packs, which you can apply at home. And um, it's it's indigenous medicine, so it's old oh. medicine. It comes from the jungle. And Rosita Arvigo was a woman who went and lived in the jungle, these jungle folks, oh, like really? 35 years ago or however long it was. And she basically learned the old ways from from the people living in Belize. And oh my gosh. Yeah. And so that's that's where it comes from, which is why it's so powerful. There is a spiritual component to it. So it's prayerful work, mm-hmm. and it's um, not that it's going to put like a religious thing on anyone, but it's it's very prayerful. So as a practitioner, when I have my hands on someone, I'm I'm in prayer wow. for them for their healing, and inviting that, and um, it's I think it's very powerful for that reason. So give me a few examples of why someone would use this type of therapy, how, mm. how this will help, how mm-hmm. this would help somebody. Sure. So, um, it's used for a lot of reasons and I do mostly see women, but I, it's, I, I do have male clients as well. Mm-hmm. So anyone like we know more and more that the digestive system is really the seat of health for our entire bodies, our brains. And so we don't really get a lot of touch on our bellies, right? That's true. You might even go to a massage at a spa and they're definitely not touching your pelvis or your belly. Right. When you go in there, it's like, ooh, like (laughs) caution tape, right? (laughs) So, um, but there's so much happening here in the belly. And so um, anyone with digestive complaints um, or just a sense of not being sort of at home home or right in the gut. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great, that's a great reason to come um, for reproductive stuff. I, I do see oh. a lot of women seeking support, natural support for fertility. Okay. Um, and also all kinds of female hormone types of things. So, um, and it's also good for the reproductive system for men as well, because it promotes by by um, doing hands on work in the abdominal area, and also it also um, treats the lower spine mm-hmm. and the hips, and creates balance and alignment in the body. Um, it just creates a lot of flow, right? So it's like everything in health has to do with how much flow and movement is happening. So it circulates the energy, the blood, the lymph, the and, and keeps things moving. Yeah. And, you know, we do store so much Mm -hmm. in our hips and in that area. You know, we're all sitting at Mm -hmm. desk. We're all sitting in the car. We I know from taking yoga class, it's always like 
hip openers are a big thing because it's like we all uh, hold it in there, you know, and everybody's all like blocked up there. Yeah. And then that's the create the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra, which is a the, all about creativity, creation, mm-hmm. and, you know, the energy center there is really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And we also, we we don't breathe so much oh, right. in this. Yeah. So it's like we've got our diaphragm. Pretty much most of us are pretty locked down. We're breathing up in our upper chest and we like, we're not taking these baby belly breaths. So by really like breathing down into the pelvis and the belly, we, we really open things up. I'm going to do it right now. <sighs> it makes you think about it, you know, <sighs> let yeah. that belly explode. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels good. It does feel good. So, um, is this just for women, or you're saying yes, men can benefit from it too? Like, let's say, what would um, a man's issue be that, um, yeah, you know, that they might want to come to you? Yeah, stress, okay. digestion. Um, you know, I think on the Arvigo website they do talk about like prostate issues, which we know is a big thing with men as they um, age. And um, even things, I think they even mention erectile dysfunction, honestly, on the yeah. RVGO site just because of, um, because it's promoting circulation. Yeah, the and circulation, the energy flow, about. all the flow. Yeah, yeah. So wow. it's still the same, it's still the same modality. It's just working on the abdomen and the lower back and creating balance, you know, whatever, whatever kind of body you have, it's still the same type of therapy. It's so interesting. So we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what it's like to work with you. And I will tell you about my experience with Dr. Schiller. Hey, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. Just the fact that you're listening to the Sound, Mind, and Body podcast tells us that you enjoy consuming your content through your ears. Now, if you're a podcast listener, you're a perfect fit to enjoy audiobooks. So for you, our listeners and official members of Sheila's Woo Woo community, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to check out their awesome service. Give it a shot. You've got nothing to lose. It's absolutely free for 30 days, and you get a free audiobook to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes or just click the Audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. On the next couple episodes of Sound, Mind, and Body, come with me to the Mind, Body, Bold Conference that I attended a few weeks ago. We'll reconnect with former guests Sadie Nardini, Corey Sterling of Conscious Council, and the co-founder of Mind, Body, Blake Beltram. If you do find yourself going through a difficult time right now, um, just know that you're not alone. And, uh, and that may actually be a really good sign because it may mean that you came here um, with a calling to make the world a better place. You may have came here as a light worker. And the reason you're being challenged is because you're being challenged to grow. And, uh, and we all have to go through it. You are not alone. And I know how brutal it is. I know. Yeah. I know. It's yeah. tough. I've been there. I've been there and I may be there again. You know, I hope not, but um, but I recognize that this is it's just part of it, and I think part of it is just accepting that it's it's not necessarily meant to be easy, but I think we um, we signed up for this when we came in. True. So you know, hey, buck up. You know, get through <laughs> it. Get through it. Get through it. You've got it. You've got to do it because the world really needs the you. The world needs you. The world needs you. Yeah. We're all casting our vote right now for whether or not we're going to evolve as a species to something more loving and compassionate and cooperative, or whether or not we're going to destroy ourselves and our habitat. That's next week on Sound, Mind, and Body. Okay, we are back and we're talking to holistic chiropractor, Dr. Suzanne Schiller. And before the break, you were explaining the uh, Arvigo therapy method and what you use. And we were just talking about all the energy for men or women in 
the gut area and how we have, it has come up again and again on our podcast, um, how important it is for that area to be, because it's connected to our brains. And it's like, it's, it's all one thing. And, you know, many times we're just not feeling that connection. So it's so important. It's so important. It's, it's really the core of everything in terms of health. And there aren't a lot of times when we're in a healthcare environment where we're actually invited to bring our attention or our awareness into our bodies. A lot of times we go to doctors and it's like we're, it's like we just kind of toss our body on the table, like, okay, figure out what's wrong with me. And we're not actually, they're not inviting us to pay attention to right. our body. And it's, um, it's really a new model to teach people to kind of listen to themselves. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's an old model, but it's, but it's kind of new in our, in our in Western our world. New, yeah. In right? our Western world, we got rid of all the old, you know, like techniques. And now it's like, we got to bring it back because they were, we <laughs> they were right. It's so much more holistic and natural. Yeah. And so what is it like to work with you? Like when someone comes to you, do you sometimes find there's something else going on than what they originally thought when they came to you? That sometimes happens, yes. A lot of times I find that the, the person knows exactly what's going on with them. Really? And so, but um, they haven't been encouraged. You know, it's like a lot of times there's a lot of doubt. It's like, oh, well, a doctor would know more than I know about what's happening in my body. And truly, like, I really find that our intuition about ourselves, our, our, that sense of knowing is very often right on. And sometimes, yeah, there's other things happening. But, but um, I al- I'm always probing to really listen and hear what, what someone senses is going on. Because we, we have our answers in there. And we just sometimes need to have them invited out of us. I really, I believe that too. And you, you know, we, you did that with me. Mm -hmm. So I went to you and we tried our, you know, we did it. So I wanted to experience what was going on. And um, I didn't really know what, you know, I didn't come to you for a specific reason. I came to you to get to know what you were doing and see what it was like to work with you. And you kind of interviewed me in the beginning and um, things came out. Like you just said, you know, things came out and you also incorporate energy healing into your practice. So let's talk about that a little bit and then we'll talk about what my experience was with you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I do have a lot of training in, in all kinds of woo stuff like that. Like I'm very, (laughs) like I've got one foot and really like the practical, like the body, like, yeah, you know, doctor stuff. And then the other foot is like, whoa, off in the woo land. So um, yeah, the the energy work is really just acknowledging that things happen that are beyond the scene. And that um, where we put our attention is very powerful. So most of my training is in clairvoyant meditation. Oh. And um, we can talk about that some other day. Oh my gosh, that's a whole other <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So that's more like the minister work that I do, like spiritual work like uh-huh. that. But um, but yeah, in terms of the body work, it's really, I, I incorporate that as much as possible. And really, a lot of times I feel like I'm guiding someone into their inner landscape where they can actually see and sense and feel and know and explore what's going on inside. And um, so that is something I I do when I'm with someone hands-on. And I can also do that at a distance. I can help people go into their body and kind of sniff around and see what's happening. (laughs) Well, I, okay. I did experience that with you. Yeah. So let's talk about, so I came to you, 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 we sat down and had a chat for about 20 minutes, half an hour about, you know, whatever. And then I was just like, well, you know, I'm getting older and, you know, I'm feeling like kind of not so vital and all that. And, you know, I laid down and you were like, let's do some energy work. I didn't know what was going to happen. And what came up was just you start putting your hands on me and you and you started to ask me about my ovaries. <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, like, 
I haven't thought about my ovaries in <laughs> years. You know, like I literally forgot about my ovaries. I didn't even think about them, you know. And you're like, okay, what's going on in there? Let's let's take a look in there. So tell me what you see. You know, and I was like, well, let me take a look. I don't know. But you just have to kind of go with the first thing. You know, it feels kind of weird, but... I realized that like my left side was just in in suspension almost. It was like it was lighter color, but it was like kind of suspended in animation like it wasn't moving. Mm. And then the the right side was dark. It was like in a cave. It was like, you know, it was like had been and what we realized through you working with me and talking to me, you're like, "Okay, let's try to balance this." You know, let's try to balance this energy and bring some light into the right side, which is the male side, right? Mm -hmm. And then the the female side was like, eh, you know, hanging out there. And it was like, I thought, oh, my God, I've been so stressed, you know, that I've been using that male energy and it's been working in this dark cave forever and not being recognized. <laughs> That's kind of what I, I got out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and we I was like, "Oh my god." And we we're trying to bring some light into the dark side and vice versa, bring some energy into the female side. And it was just profound to me. I was like, "What? It's a whole part of me I had just completely forgotten about." Yeah. You can never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, that's actually the coolest part about it. Yeah. Is you just you kind of invite a healing to happen. And there's yeah. a wisdom that's in us and that's what orchestrates it. And so like my job is not so much trying to make something happen. It's really just helping create an environment where someone can have that kind of experience in their body with their own, because we're self healers. Their own wisdom. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And, yeah. and then the next day you sent me an email and you were like, so how are you feeling today? did you have any dreams? And I was like, you know what? I actually did. <laughs> I had this incredible dream about whales. And I was like, I had this dream about whales. It was so weird that there were, there were three whales. One was like this big giant whale and I had forgotten about it. And so it ended up being like beached and, you know, turned into a statue and then I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about that whale. You know, oh, wait, there's two more. And so then there were two more. And I was like, I'm going to go swim with these whales. And it was kind of scary, but exciting. And so then you sent me like, you know, the meaning, <laughs> the meaning of whales and dreams. And it was just really incredible. It was very profound. And it, it actually, you know, made sense to me. Mm. It made sense to what was going on in my life at the time. And still, still now. You know, I just looked at it again, um, the whales, and it's about the wisdom. It's about mm -hmm. the wisdom and the depth and the, you know, creation and, you know, all that. And I was, you know, tapping into your inner wisdom. And I was kind of, I guess, ignoring that. I don't know. You know, ignoring that and that big whale that ended up a statue was, you know, a representative of me ignoring my own wisdom. That's kind of what I read about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it resurfaced. It resurfaced. Oh, it resurfaced. Oh, my God. Right? I just got that. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it, it, it's it, so cool. It was very cool. Yeah. And it was really profound. And then you sent me, you know, a TED Talk of the woman that you follow. And you, you sent me other all this other information. Yeah. And I, it was just really great. So if mm. anybody out there is listening and they think they want to work on this kind of a thing, or they have an issue, I highly recommend you get in touch. And I'll put your website, Suzanne, on the in the show notes. But it's Dr. Suzanne Schiller, right? It's just it's actually just my name. No, no doctor. Oh, it's just Suzanne, Suzanne Schiller dot com. com. That's right. And I will put that in the show notes. But you can work with people rem remotely too. Yes, of course not. I, I can't do any sort of chiropractic body work over the phone. But um, <laughs> um, I can definitely do all kinds of spiritual guidance work and spiritual healing and or consulting with people. I am super interested in the clairvoyant. Um, oh yes, meditation 
We're going to talk about that after. Mm -hmm. Do you teach classes in that or? You know, I used to do classes Uh and we might have to resurface that. Yeah. Because it's really fun. It's a Let's really, do it at really the studio. Fun. Oh my gosh, it's the best. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, that would be great. So Suzanne is one of the clients at my strength training studio. I luckily, I just have the most wonderful people walk in the door there, and I just realized what you do. You know, I, Joe told me Joe is your trainer. He adores you, and um, I just was like, oh my gosh, I need to talk to her. And then it, the opportunity came up, and we just started talking, and I was like. Let's let's have you on the podcast. You know, this is yeah. so interesting. I'd never heard about something like this before. So, um, okay. Now I'm gonna ask you all the questions that I ask all my guests. Super. Okay. All right. So besides being so clairvoyant and, you know, into your own wisdom and intuition, how do you say of sound mind and body in your own life? Oh, I love that. Um Yeah. That's that's a challenge in the city. Oh yeah. But um I definitely I find that what I eat really matters, what I surround myself with, so the people, like the things that I take in, like I'm off social media right now. Sorry to say that. I want people to follow you on YouTube, but I personally am just kind of off social media. Yeah. And um, I try to be out in nature and do stuff like that. That's great. Yeah. No, we were talking before the show about listening rather than watching, you know, and that right. whole thing right. about how we're watching, we're looking at a screen all the time now. Yeah. You know? It's stressful. It's it's like information overload for our nervous systems. And we're most of us are pretty fried. <laughs> You know, it's true. It's like we really need to learn to unplug from time to time. That is so true. And that's why I like this podcast to be audio only. Yeah. Because to me, it's like I like just being able to take a walk and listen to it or listen to podcasts or, you know, drive or, you know, clean the house even and listen, you know, instead of just listening rather than um, watching and sitting, you know. Yeah. Inundating our eyes with more. Yeah, I think I I take it in more in my Mm -hmm. ears. I don't know. Yeah. It's like you were saying when you're watching a video, you're you're like looking at the person asking the question and they're (laughs) furrowing their brows or doing things. And you're just like, why am I watching that? I need to listen to what they're saying. (laughs) Okay, second question. What's a favorite sound? Mm, Silence. Oh. All-time favorite sound. (laughs) (laughs) It's so precious. Mm, it is. Isn't it? I'm getting more into silence, uh, too. I really yeah. am. So good. <laughs> so, okay. Favorite memory? Oh, my favorite memory. Um, you know, there there was um, when I was about, I think I was about 22, I did a vision quest. I was really into like um, Native American, like sweat lodges and things at the time. And um, I went and did a vision quest cool. outside and fasted for a few days. Oh, my gosh. And um, at the end of that, I had to, like, walk up. Um, I was with the group like that did it together. I mean, not together, together. We were in our own space, but we did it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And we, like, walked up. We are on this beautiful mountain ridge, and it was, like, incredible sunset on one side and the hugest full moon on the other. I was just like right standing between those two things. Wow. And I just remember it like permanently burned in my brain, like so much beauty. And um, then we all sat down and broke our fast. It was, and it was like food tasted so good after fasting. <laughs> I bet. It was really, it was like such an amazing moment. How oh, cool. Where did you do that? Like that here in California? In Northern California. I think it was at like Henry Coe Park. I don't remember. I lived in Santa Cruz at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very so around cool. There. Wow. Yeah. I mean, these days, where would you do something like, do they do still do things like that? I don't know. I, I could probably look that woman up. It was, it was fabulous. Cool. It was really, really amazing. It sounds really cool. Yeah. Okay, so favorite place. Oh my gosh, my favorite place. Oh, the redwoods. Ah, yes. I just love big trees. 
They're majestic. They're so good. Mm. Okay. The Redwoods. I love it. All right. Final question. What's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? Oh my goodness. (laughs) Okay. Well, (laughs) the most woo-woo thing. Well, I would say probably, (laughs) probably one of the most woo-woo. There are many. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) I think one of the the most woo-woo things was when I was um, like a late teenager in the early 20s. Um, right before I went to chiropractic school, or maybe as I was going to chiropractic school, there was this whole there was this whole network chiropractic thing that was happening. I have no idea if you missed that train or what, but it was like a very subtle kind of chiropractic where it would happen in a group, mm-hmm. and there would be these big. They would have these things called uh, it was like transformational gate, where like you'd be in a room with like. 50 tables all out and all these people like writhing around on the tables and like breathing <laughs> funny and weird like just it was like it was so crazy oh my god actually that was you know this was my childhood though. this <laughs> was my like, late childhood <laughs> it was like looking back on wow. it that was probably pretty weird like in my life that was kind of normal woo. but but it was it was definitely woo so what were they like it getting was, out of it well, it's basically like that whole system. That's actually why I went to chiropractic school originally to learn that. But it's it's kind of a more subtle system for learning how to kind of self adjust. Oh, okay. And so it's a it's it's almost like your body goes into spontaneous yoga, oh. um, kind of unwinding. Like There's intuitive. lots of different things, like craniosacral therapy and myofascial work, and a bunch of different kinds of therapies that that sort of aim to get your body to unwind tension okay. and come back to like a peaceful state. Oh so that's goodness. what it was. But if you didn't know what was going on, you would think like, oh my gosh, this <laughs> what is some these? like wackadoo. Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I've heard of anything oh my like gosh. that. <laughs> wow. Well, yes. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. That is really cool. So that's very woo-woo. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today, Suzanne. It, it's been so wonderful hearing from you and you having you here in the studio imparting your wisdom. And you obviously have so much more to give. And we're going to talk about the clairvoyant meditation because I'm really getting into meditation lately. Yay. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, that's it for this episode. Have you ever experienced Maya abdominal therapy or something like it? Let us know your story. Send us a voice memo or email to soundmindbodypodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. And please subscribe if you haven't already. You can do that on our website under the subscribe tab. Just select your favorite listening platform and subscribe to get notified of new episodes right away. And while you're at it, you can join our WooBoo community too. Just enter your email on the homepage of our website and you'll start to receive an email every Monday with the latest episode, along with special announcements and other news. And I've got some things planned, so join us now and don't miss out. If you like the podcast, we would really appreciate it if you could give us a review on iTunes. It helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards and the Inbound Podcasting Network. And thank you to our guest, Dr. Suzanne Schiller. Get in touch and join the conversation. We're on Instagram at Sound Mind Body Podcast or find us on Facebook, YouTube, or the web. Search for Sound Mind and Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve.